Okay, good morning. Um, let's uh, uh, start with a quick review on what we've done last time. And then we're going to pick up from there and talk about some good stuff today. Um, we wanted to talk about constructors, destructors, um, uh, and the current objects. So we started building this my string thingy to be able to re replace uh, the uh, difficult task of dealing with, dealing with C string. So we essentially wanted to do all the dirty work that we have to do with C string and encap uh, uh, encapsulate all the dirty work that we wanted to do in C string and put it in a class so we don't have to deal with it anymore. And we started the class, as you see, as, as we have over here. And um, first of all, uh, back seat, uh, can you, uh, is it uh, visible for you? End of the class? Or is it too small? Is it OK? OK. All right. So uh, uh, essentially, this is what we have done. So we said we want to be able to create a string uh, with a specific maximum size. All the strings that we are creating are dynamic. They should be able to resize itself ba based on uh, the need that, is, that, is, uh, that it has. So uh, the first constructor we create, actually the first constructor we created was a default constructor. Where, um, where did I put the default constructor? It's down here. Let me bring it up. The first thing we created was the default, default constructor, which we simply set everything to null and put the object to it into a safe empty state that we, can, we said we can actually initialize the va anything that belongs or, or class is in the initialization area. And we said that's a fake name. It doesn't exist. I just made it up. So initialization area was between the uh, uh, closed parentheses of uh, the constructor and the open curly bracket of the body of the constructor where you can initialize everything you have in a class. So we set that thing to null, and now we said that that's an empty thing. When we don't have anything, that uh, it's a pointer that it's null. Then we said if I want to uh, uh, create a, a class, if I want to create a string using a, a literal value, I need to get that value and uh, allocate and copy the information into it. So we didn't want to deal with the allocation and copying over and over. We learned it like three weeks ago. So we uh, encapsulate that one in our utility box, which we have our utils in there. So the allocation and copy, essentially what it did was to, I'm not going to even bring it up. Uh, what it did, it measured the string that it's supposed to, measured the string to see if, first of all, the string is a string. Uh, then it allocates. Uh, uh, receiving the reference of the pointer it wants to allocate into, it sets it to null, does the allocation, does the copying and all the good stuff in a very safe way, make sure that the, the pointer remains null if the allocation is unsuccessful, does all the good stuff. So we use that one to do the allocate a copy and hold it in main exactly to the size of the string that is coming in. And that's how we uh, became capable of having something like this. So we could actually create a, a string that is empty, create a string that has only, uh, we said that assignment at the moment of creation is a call to a one argument constructor. So essentially we initialize our string with something, or we can say we, have, we are initializing the value up to certain length. And for that, we created our second utility thingy for allocation and copy to do it, to, 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 to truncate the data that is copying up to a maximum length if needed. That was a demonstration of having different types of constructors. Okay, so we had three different constructors for our string. Then we talked about obviously the very first thing you do after you create the constructor is to create the destructor to make sure it's the data that you have at least the allocated and given back to the operating system. Well, we uh, deleted the data like an array because it's an array of characters anyway. And we made sure that when the object is gone, that's uh, what's going to happen. 
Then we said we don't want to only initialize the value, we, we want to be able to set the values halfway through. So we said we need to have a function to be able to actually set the string to whatever we want. And that's the set function that we are doing. The only difference between a set function and a constructor is that uh, a set string assumes that there is an already existing data and deletes it beforehand. But we did that already in allo copy. So we didn't need to worry about that either. So the allo copy that we have, if we just do a kind of sneak uh, uh, look at it, kind of peek the definition and see what it is, it essentially deletes the thing, sets, the, sets it to null. If the source is available, it does all the good stuff it's supposed to. So that's that. Then we talked about set, and uh, yeah, we set it like that. And then we said uh, um, it would be nice if I can cascade everything and start continue going after setting print do whatever I want to do to a string. So not only set it and then keep going. To do that, the set should return the owner, so it can actually continue its work. So we if we put a dot right after that one and continue to print. So. To do that, we said it's easy. All I need to do is to send a reference of the class that I am in and return myself. So essentially, target of this means reference of uh, the point, uh, the place that this is pointing to, which is myself. So I return myself out. So in this case, when set is called, set is returning s out. In here, when cat is called, cat is returning t out because cat is returning this, set is returning this. At this moment, set belongs to s, so this will be s. At this moment, cat is pointing to t, therefore, this is t. So uh, the concatenation done through was done through resizing the, the size of the memory that we went through, and we understood that we would want to resize. We cannot resize the memory, actually. We have to allocate a completely new one and have an addition and everything, uh, calculate to see what is the whole size, that, the big size that we want. So if we want to add something to our memory, uh, we need to make the memory bigger. So resizing memory, it doesn't matter if the memory is smaller or bigger. Uh, you cannot use the old one. You have to copy the old one into a newly allocated memory. If you want to shrink it, you have to uh, allocate a memory that is smaller and copy only part of the data in it and continue. And if you want to make it bigger, you have to allocate a bigger memory and copy everything and yada, yada, yada. So for that, we first allocated memory to the size of the both things because we are concatenating, uh, making sure that the data that is coming in is actually it has something. And, uh, and the M data, the data of the class actually points to something. Oh, anyways, we, we calculated the exact same amount that it needs. Then we copied the old data to the temporary memory, deleted the old data, and updated the old data to point to the newly allocated memory. And then we concatenated old-fashioned way, the dirty work of the C string. So if somebody calls the cat, they don't know what's happening. They just, what they see is that they see the string that is here will be added to the other. What I did not talk about over here was that you, you, your string is not supposed to always, always get set or concatenated to a literal value or to a C string. A C string should be able to set, to, sorry, a my string should be able to be set to another my string. My string should be able to be concatenated with another my string, not only regular thing. That is pretty easy. So it is essentially what we have over here with no difference. The only difference is instead of a constant character pointer, we receive over here a constant my string reference of uh, another uh, M string, I call it. Okay? So same thing over here. So this one's going to concatenate another one. And it's constant because I want to make sure I'm not changing them. So that's essentially what's going to be. Doing that, I can actually concatenate other strings to what I have. So they can work with each other. So creating that one, it's pretty simple, um, knowing that I can reuse my code. So all I need to do essentially over here is to say return uh, 
the, what do I return? The set of mstr.mdata and done. Because, because I already wrote the set for a literal, for a for C string, and I know that the data of the C string is set. And I know that if it takes care of it, if it's null and everything, so I can do the same. And I can do the exact same thing for concatenation. Again, there is no problem over there. Always reuse your code first, unless you see you, don't, can't, you can't. So in here, I'm going to say cat mstr mdata. After doing all that, one thing, another thing that I did not mention, that the print that we are doing is only printing on O strip. It's printing on C out, sorry. It's only, what if I want to print it on C log, O C, C, C error? What is the difference between C log and, remember that C, C log and C error? You don't remember? C out, C log, C error, who remembers? Anyone? What was it? is used to print the error statements for the code and the log is to logging some information. Logins. So, but do they really? No. They just named it differently so you can, so you have three of them. If one of them failed, you can still print something. But they named it properly say, and say, okay, if you just want to, if you want to do debugging, printing, print it on C log. If you want to print an error message, print like an error that is because of a critical thing and you cannot print on C out anymore, print it on C error. But this one can only print on C out, so I cannot use this as an error message anymore. So because of that, my print cannot work that way. My print should get what I want. And I don't want to lose this either. I want to be able to print, and it prints on C out unless I want something else. And for that, I have the proper tool that I want. It's pretty simple. So all I need to do over here is to say receive <coughs> O stream reference uh, OSTR, and I'm going to default that to STD C out. So still it will work the same way. So let's come over here. And all I need to do is to use OSTR instead. So when I do something like this, print's usage is not different anymore. All I need to do over here is to say, OK, I have, I'm printing, and it's O stream, and I'm printing on OSTR. Good. But if they don't provide the OSTR, you'll see out. Now, if they want to actually print, so in here they can actually, they can, they can either regularly print it, print, or they can print on C log if they want. They both work. When the don't mention it, when you don't mention it, you cancel. Well, you can always change it to and that creates an amazing side effect that we're going to see in a few minutes. Kind of a peek, sneak peek on what we have in future. We want to be able to do the same thing for reading. So I don't want to just print this thing. I want to be able to get something from the string, from the, from the, from the console. And for that, I'm not going to bore you with it. Uh, just, uh, I'm just going to bring it up and, and, and tell you what we want to do. So I want to be able to read, but the read I want to do, <clears throat> um, I, want, I want it to be a, uh, so when I say just read, I want to be able to read from CN. So, so I want it to be the same thing over here. When I just read, I want it to be CN, right? So when you are reading, what, what, are you, what do you do? When you are reading a string from the from the console, what do you do? First of all, you want to include all the spaces and stuff. That's number one. So we cannot use the, ex the, 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 the extraction operator because extraction operator stops at spaces. We have to use get line. And also, sometimes I want to read up to a comma. Maybe I'm reading a comma separated value. It's not, it's not always the, the new line. So again, I'm going to design my, my uh, read to by standard working at starting at new line, um, but uh, uh, if I want to, I can actually do that. We use that. We use a default value for arguments for that, and it's pretty simple and straightforward, as usual. So, what I will do would be something like this. <coughs> I'm going to say, hey, I want to read. 
this is the delimiter where I want to stop at. And it is by default new line. And I want to read it from iStream, obviously, but I want it to be the, by default CN. Now, what are the other objects that we can, because we only know one thing that it's CN, but you will see it's a vast amount of things that falls into the category of CN. We're going to get to that soon. So writing this function is not pretty, it's not a, a difficult thing either. So I'm just going to bring it over here and create a definition for it. So what I need to do in that reading of mine is to get a C string from the console, right? That's what I want to do. So what I will do is saying I'm going to get a C string. Uh, and actually, I have a get C string over here. I have two of them. That's with length, and this is with that. But I want a C string that stops with the delimiter. So, so I'm going to change that. So I'm going to have get C string, which is fine. In here, I'm going to put it in M data. Um, and um, I'm going to receive it from the I stream because I want to get it from I stream. I have to mention where. And I want to pass the delimiter to it. So that's what I like my uh, get string to look like. I want to be able to get my data, so that's probably a reference to a pointer. Um, I need iStream, where to read it from, and where to stop, right? Quite straightforward. So how do I do that? Just a second. So let's, so let's, so let's, hello, okay, so uh, let's do that. Let's actually make C string to receive what I want to receive. So the C string that I have over here is simply setting, so this is not, this is not the C string I want. This actually sucks. I need something to actually do a dynamic thing. I want this one. That's bad. So um, I'm going to just leave it like that, let it be. And I'm going to kind of hang around this one. So <clears throat> it is essentially doing the same thing. It has a maximum size that it reads. The only problem that it has is that it is always getting from C in, right? So let's fix the, all those problems. It's, it's just a matter of seconds to do it. So I'm going to come to this utils thingy that I have. First, I'm going to fix that one. So it's this one. I need to have the. Uh, the uh, STD I stream coming in, and I'm going to put it ISTR in here. And the next thing I want to add over here is uh, a character delimiter. And this we know that by default is going to be uh, uh, STD CN. Okay. And other one is going to be the delimiter that is new line. Now I want to see if I'm going to create any conflict with this. So uh, do I? I don't have that one added over here. Let's include IO stream over here. So I have the IO stream. I think now we are. Why is it giving me an error over here? Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, <clears throat> I'll tell you what my concern is. So I created that one. Now take a look at this. Is there any way for the for C to recognize if something is being passed by reference or by value? It's the same, right? When you when you pass, it, so this is going to be in trouble. So we have to think because uh, I I like it to be overloaded, but maybe this is. Because that's just regular thing getting up to certain size, but this is dynamic string. So I may change the name. I may have it. I may have it get dynamic C string. The nature of beast is completely different over here. I don't want to. So. So in here, let's fix that. I'm going to say get dynamic string. 
Okay, so this one is going to be get dynamic string because we are getting dynamic string essentially, and we want it to have the same additional arguments that the other one has, obviously not set. And in here, I'm going to have the C in removed. Oh, the default arguments are not provided over here, obviously, and this one too, so we're going to get it like that. Um, set dynamic string, yeah, so, and in my SDR over here, uh, when I'm actually using this, let me just correct that, it is not, it's get dynamic string. That's kind of better. Now, the rest of it is pretty easy. Get line, instead of that, I'm going to say, I think I can actually, oh, uh, Oh, get line, so delimiter goes over here. That's no problem. And simply, I change the C into ISTR, I guess. Do I have anything else to do over here? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> In this changing functions, be careful. Because usually, it's very easy. And it's so easy, you forget to clear I stream. So you say C in. So it actually reads from I string that there is C in, and there's a part that if you there's no error, and you say it's so fix and set everything. And here is C in, that's if ISDR. <coughs> Search and replace is usually better, but. So everything else is the same, right? So I have null pointer. I get the buffer for the size I want. I do a get line, so I'm going to go up to morning. So I'm going to go up to the dynamic and delimiter. That's fine. I stream, yada, yada, yada. Please uh, be, my, be my peer reviewers. Yeah, seriously. Really? Yeah. <laughs> OK. Um, and uh, see if I'm miss, missing anything in here. So get dynamic string is reading. OK, I'll be good down to this point. All right. All right. Also, I'm checking something else as we are doing it. So this is week five, right? OK. OK, so we have done all these good stuff now. So we can read it. Uh, so just to show you how, how, how it's going to work, I just want to see this. And let me just remove this garbage from here. We don't need it. So in here, I can have uh, um, <clears throat> so in here I can have my SDR say name, and I can say uh, C out name. Uh, we don't need these. I could have I could have used just the S thingy. Yeah, let's not put the name. I'm just going to use the S. So I have that one. So I don't want these things to get printed. So now in here I'm going to say uh, uh, S dot read. So I'm going to say enter your name and I read it. I'm going to concatenate. Uh, I'm going to concat, so a cat is, cat. this T is hello, so I'm going to say T cat, and in here I'm going to put S, and I'm going to put uh, cat again. So it's going to be hello, and then it concatenates the S that is the name. Um, how are you? And it prints it on a lock. And I do not need this empty thing. <clears throat> OK, so something to overwrite. So let's go through it, see if it works. So what I'm doing over here is this. I'm saying, OK, S is some value, some string with something. And I have my SDR that has hello there, but only five of it. So hello is going to go in there. 
Let's make it six so I have a space. Or I don't need to. I'm going to say cat a space and then dot cat. Okay, so I have hello in T, then I get the name from the console, then I concatenate, uh, uh, what, am I, what am I doing? So I concatenate, I have to put it after. So I'm going to say over here, it's going to be hello, I'm going to hello space, the name that I read, and then how are you? So let's, let's see if it works or not. So <clears throat> first I'm going to run it, see if it crashes, then I'm going to walk through it. Okay, so um, we'll run it three years later. Errors, no. Errors. Where is the, oh, something must return a value. What? My screen read must return. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, what dynamic string is? It's returning a Boolean? Yeah. So I'm going to just say return ISDR. Run it one more time. Really? Okay. So people think when they talk like this, nobody hears. All right. Okay. So so now in here, I'm gonna say I don't know Tommy. Okay. And it's gonna say hello, Tommy. How are you? So that concatenate thing you worked for pretty nicely. You see that? Are we okay? Okay. Right. You want me to walk through it? Anyone? Okay. So I'm going to go F10 over here, and I stick this one to the left, that one to the right, and remove everything over here so it's one. So well, we know it, 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 it's uh, the constructor. We know this. We know we're going to go for the read. So it's going to print name, and it's going to go to read because it's defaulted to the values that we want it to. It goes into dynamic string, passing the data with some things to overwrite. And then ISDR that to read from and delimiter is the new line to something to get from. Then it goes into dynamic string and it comes over here. The very first thing is doing, oh my goodness, did you see what I just do? Did I just I just created what what happened? Memory leak. Good, thank you for actually telling me to <laughs> to walk through. So I just created memory leak. When you are reading something dynamically, we should assume that there is something in it. So something to overwrite just got leaked over there. Bad person I am. So what you need to do, you have to make sure, because you're supposed to overwrite it, we need to delete it first. That's better. So I'm going to uh, stop the execution right here and put a stop sign over here and recompile and run one more time. So I had memory leak. It's one of the things that you see, yes, I did it. And then when you submit it, Valgrin catches you say, what the hell? <laughs> OK, so now it makes more sense. When I look at string, that's something to overwrite, which is deleted and gone. Now we don't have anything. Now it's set to null. And then the story continues, the get line. Did I do it? So I'm, oh, I'm putting it above. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm doing dynamic like that. OK, sure. So it gets the dynamic read. Uh, I entered over there Tommy, right? So I have Tommy in buffer. Then I'll go over here. Then I'll go over here and I will uh, allocate uh, enough for the, for the buffer and string copy it. And um, after it's done, uh, I just return uh, a Boolean uh, uh, result of SDR, which means it's true because the pointer is not null. So it comes back in, and now life is beautiful. Now we are good. So it's the first one that, that it's read, and now it concatenates space to it. So it comes over here, the data that is just, just one space. But again, it's going to calculate the size and everything, allocate it, uh, put the hello in temp, delete the old data, then uh, sets the, uh, the, 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 the data to point to temp. Now it has extra space for it and concatenates the space and gets out. And next one is to concatenate uh, the S that has Tommy in it. So it comes over here. Essentially, it's the same thing. It just passes the data of the other one. So I don't need to walk through it. I just did it. And that concatenates the name and comes out again another literal. 
the same page, just that 11 goes out. And after that, we are done. And let's keep going. Okay, thanks. Get ready for this. We have a good thing coming up. And if I don't talk about, anyways, at the end, I'm going to let you know if you should watch the recordings for the ZAA for the last session for a session number eight, I think. Some cool stuff were covered over there. I, I strongly suggest to watch it. If I if if I go through it today, fine. If I don't, then it's a good idea. I'll let you know. Anyways, <clears throat> so here it comes. Where do I go? Where do I... Hello. What is an operator? You want to say something? <laughs> no? OK. What is an operator? To perform operations on the variables. To perform operations on variables. OK? So, uh, so operator is essentially something which I put between two operands. Operands are the arguments of the operator, right? So I write 2 plus 3. Plus is that is an operator receives a 2 and a 3. And its job is to sum them up and return the value, right? So with respect to arguments that operators can get, how many different arguments I can pass to an operator? Do you remember? Like, just think about all the math that you have done in your life when you use an operator. <laughs> I loved her face. You're like, what? OK. <laughs> <laughs> so all the math that you're like when you put an operator, usually how many things are passed to an operator? Two. two? So two. It's only two. So there's n impossible. So if so, it could be unary. I could have minus five, right? So sometimes operators just like, get one operand, correct? But what is what is always and always and always? obvious about operators in uh, C language is that they return things, right? That's why you can say A is equal to B is equal to C and so on and so forth. Are we good down to this point? Are we okay? So I, if, if, let's say, we don't have an operator called at sign, by the way. That's the only thing that is not an operator. OK, so there is no at sign. I'm just using at generalize an operator, right? So I have two. I, I have an operator that, that goes like this. So in here, I'll go, I'll go A is set to B, right? I'm talking about at sign, not assignment. Assignment is an operator of its own. We know that. OK, its job is to get two operands. It sets the left one to right one. So we know that all these things, right? Now I'm going to say A is B at C. So I have, I'm just talking about that, that one. I'm going to come down, and I'm just going to ask about the second operator that we have over here, right? So when I have over here A, B, How many operands the plus operator has? Two. Two. When <clears throat> those, uh, when plus operator receives A and B and does whatever it's supposed to do, is A and B changed afterwards? Oh, sorry, B and C. Thank you. <laughs> you see that plus over there? When I get, so A plus B, A equals B plus C. After plus is done, is B or C changed? But no, they're not changed, right? OK, so this is the first category that we need to understand about operators. We call this one binary operators 
with no side effect. Right? It's like minus, division, multiplication, modulus, these things. They get two operands, they do whatever they are supposed to do with them, and they don't change any of them, right? Just get the values. And many, many examples of it, right? So A is set to B minus C. And I can keep going. Divide. Oh. Right? These are all binary operators. They do something. We accept two things. So this one says B minus C, which means it gets the value of B, reduces it by C, and returns that value, right? This one gets the value of B, divides it by C, whatever the value is, returns it. This one gets the value of B, tests it with C. If it's greater, then it returns true. If not, it returns false. This one assumes B and C are conditions. If this one is non-zero and this one is non-zero, it will return true. Otherwise, in any other case, it's going to return false. Are, are we OK with this? Fantastic. Get ready, my guest. OK, so we have A is set to B plus equals C. How many arguments plus equal receives? Two. Are the arguments changed? Any of them change after it's done? B change. B changes. B changes, right? So, so because B changes, then this is exactly the same thing as the other one with one difference. What's the difference over here? It's with side effect, which means plus equal is changing the left operand. And the left operand is one of the most important with it okay so plus equal is that type of a thing so these type of things exist that you can actually that they actually change the values so like what is it Let's a is set to b minus equal c a is equal to b c something like that so let's put it like this like that <laughs> Right? This is changing C out, right? Because it's printing something out of it. So it's a binary operator, and it changes the left-hand side, right? Right-hand side remained unchanged because it's just getting printed. Are we okay with this? These are binary operators with side effect. Are we okay with this? All right? Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Unary operators, that they look like this. We call these prefix unary operator. Because it comes before the thing, minus, like, so if I say, How many arguments the plus is receiving over here? How many operands? Two. Plus is receiving two? One. <laughs> it one, right? Does that plus change the value of B? No, it doesn't. It, it's the job of that unary operator, which essentially is nothing because because when you put plus it doesn't do any the plus is ineffective in that in that manner bad example for it but what it does it receives the value of b and returns it okay so if i do something like this now it actually makes more sense it receives the value of b and negates it and returns it now if i write over here something like a is equal to not b what it does it considers this to be a condition if it's non zero it will return false. If it is zero, it returns true, right? So this, this operator is a prefix unary operator without side effect. There is only one unary operator that has side effect and one. And that's minus 
s minus m plus plus. There's two s. There are no derivative two that they are unary, and so if I go, so I don't, I, I'm not going to even generalize it. If I say a is equal to plus plus b, or a is equal to minus minus b, this is prefix unary operator with side effect. Right? Are we okay with this? And I have news for you. Post-fix unary operator that goes like this. I don't, I don't even need to generalize it because it's only plus plus and minus minus. We don't have anything else. There is no other operator <clears throat> that so essentially, post-fix unary operator with side effect is only plus plus and minus minus. We don't have any other operator that comes after that thing. Are we okay with this? That's what, that's what operators are. Are we okay with that? Questions? Suggestions? Objections? Actually, let's save this. Other. I called it text. I'm going to call it operators.txt. Now, please uh, pay, I, pay. Yes, yes. Pay absolute attention to what I'm about to do, please. I am going to come over here in my in and in, in the string thingy that we have. Okay. I am, what I'm going to do over here is just renaming these. I'm not doing anything. Okay. What is set? Set is essentially assigning, correct? Right? So, see what I'm doing? I'm not changing anything. I'm just going to say operator. Assignment. That's all. I didn't do anything. I just renamed the function. Now I'm going to come back over here in this one and I'm going to set that one to operator. Right? Are we okay with this? So I'm going to go to my main and in here instead of, oh, I don't have a set. Uh, so I'll set it. Don't mind. I can do it. I can do it. It's not. So in here, I, I'm going to say, <clears throat> I'm going to say, uh, instead of t hello there thingy over here, I'm going to do it like this. So I'm going to say t dot operator equal, and in here I'm going to say a hello. Got it? I run the program. I just renamed the thing to, to operator equal. It's the same thing, no difference. Right? It's absolutely the same. We had the set, I changed it to operator equal. Any problem with that? Okay, concatenation. Looks like you are adding something to the string at left, right? When you want to add something to a variable, what operator do you use? Plus equal. Not plus. Plus doesn't change anything. Left there. Plus equal does. Right. So let's do that. So all the cats you see over here, I'm, I'm not going to even bother. And actually, let's do it like this. So in here, I'm going to say Control H. I'm going to say in this project, set all the sets to operator, operator equal. In current project, done. Okay. So that's what I did. Okay. And for cat, in here, I'm going to say change all the cats to operator plus equal. And I'm going to change everything. So I'm just renaming. I didn't do anything else. Let me see if I broke something with this uh, re renaming thingy. Rebuild. No, I didn't. So when you look at the program, are we okay with this, people? 
Any problem with this? Operators can be called in two different ways. First of all, this is called operator overloading, which means you cannot invent a new operator. Okay, I cannot create a, 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 an at sign operator because it doesn't exist. Okay, if an operator is binary, you have to create an operator that receives two arguments somehow. Okay, now in here, if this is supposed to be operator, the left operator will be t, the left operand will be t, and the right operand operand will be hello, right? Obviously, right? Be okay with this. And in here, if the plus equal is the operator, the left operand will be t, and the right operand will be right. So <clears throat> you have two ways to call an operator. Either call it using the function version of it, or because it's an operator, C understands this too. Good. So, when an operator is not defined, the compiler checks, is this implemented? I'll pick that one. So at any moment of time, so if I say over here, for example, if I say over here, for example, T plus plus, is that defined? No. What is this? Or that's actually, yeah, T plus plus. So I put a bad. Uh, if I say plus plus T, let's put it like this. So uh, that's hello. So in, in here, I'm going to, uh, let's do this first, then I'm going to go through it. So, so I'm doing this, right? Now, for here, if I wanted to, if I wanted to, let me just do it step by step so it doesn't become very confusing. So in here, I'm going to go T. I'm going to separate them, and then we're going to, so this is essentially what we have done, right? Correct? This is what we have done, right? So to change this to the version that is an operator, I'm going to do this. Right? To this one. I'm going to say T plus equal S, and to this one, I'm going to go T plus equal, how are you? Okay. So when you run the program, the compiler looks at it. I have a plus equal. No, I don't. Right? So let's walk through this. Then we're going to go. So, so the very first thing that you are learning over here are the most natural operator overloads that you have for a class. That is, the operator belongs to the left one left operand, it's one of its methods, and it receives something, one argument at right, and therefore it's binary. That's the most natural way. And it has a side effect. And it has a side effect. So this is the most natural way that we are going through. So if I actually run the program now, you will see that when I get to here, oops, You see that when I get to you see that when I get to here, it literally jumps to the operator equal because it looks at the operator, it says, at left side, I have a, a, a my string. At right side, I have a constant character pointer. Which one do I pick up? The one that belongs to my string and has a constant character. Are we okay with this? 
and it runs it. It, it works the exact same way. It has n absolutely no difference. So if I do it like this, it's going to come out. Now plus equal. Now if I go over here plus equal like this, what's going to happen? Then it's going to go to the plus equal operator and run the exact same thing that it's supposed to. And the next plus equal is plus equal where the left one is a my string and the right one is a my string. So when it goes, it goes to the one that is, has the same thing. So all you need to do is to recognize it. So if we go back to the template we created over here, binary operators with side effect, when you have something, when you have something like this, so I'm going to first come up over here, I'm going to say A type, A, B type, B and C type C. So let's say A is of type A, B is of type B, C is of type C. Okay? So to predict what we have. So when I have when I have something, um, it's not no side effect, it is with side effect. So in here, essentially this plus equal must return what? No. What is the type that B is returning most likely? Okay. What is the type of the left operand of plus equal? What is the type of the right operand? What is it returning? Okay. Remember, it's an overload. You can make it do anything. What is the meaning of overload? Having an already existing function, make it work in a different way. So obviously, when you want to do, so you have something like this. Usually, they are all from the same type. And when you are returning B, you are returning B. But when you see something like this, you have to do what it says. It says the plus equal is setting an A. So most likely, I know casting is going to happen, many things behind the scene, but most likely this operator is returning an A type. So if you want to see what is, what is the signature of this, the signature of this is A type. I don't know if it's a reference or value. We don't know. It doesn't, there is no way to know. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Then it belongs to B type. It's operator plus equal and receives a C type. Right? That's the most likely thing. And it has to have, it have different things. I don't know. It, I have no idea. It may be this. Or it may be this. I have absolutely no idea. Right? It could be any of these. It could be even this. Actually, from the nature of plus equal, most likely, if you follow the rules that we have done, because you always pass everything by reference and they are constant, because it's not change, it is C, this C is not supposed to change, most likely it's a constant C type reference value. But anyways, you get the message, right? That's what it is. So, all operators, binary operators that you see most likely are this. This is the first thing the compiler looks at. Because it's object oriented, it runs for members. Always. Are we okay with this? All right. Let's say in this, okay, so let's say, let's save this over here. So I'm going to say A binary with side effect. Member binary, sorry. Member binary with side effect.
I have my string S that is Fred. Okay? Now I'm doing this. What do you think is a good thing to do when I do minus minus s? Last letter? It's the left side. The first letter. You can make minus minus s print something for you if we are dumb enough. Because, yeah, you people do that. When you come to OP345, you'll be amazed what the insertion operator is actually is, that you're using it for C out. <laughs> it's not insertion operator, believe me. OK? It's something else. Oh, you'll see it. But it's actually a C operator. It has nothing to do with C++. The, the insertion and extraction operator, it's binary left shift for bits and binary right shift for bits. But you'll find out next semester. Anyways, they overload it so it works like this, and they call it insertion operator because it's so popular. But it makes sense to me when I do minus minus s for me to remove the first character of this one. That's what makes sense to me. Are we OK with this? All right, so what I'm going to do in here, so if I want to do this, what is it going to be? So first of all, C++ likes unary operators to be members. All the operators that we have, we can design members we can do it bad practice why because it's object orientation we don't we shouldn't have non-member functions anywhere but you if you have to you can okay Let's have it in mind keep that in mind but but the the thing is that it so the essentially what this is going to be in compiler's point of view will be actually this s dot operator Minus, because it's a unary operator, and unary operators, they, by definition, they come before the thing. That's the, the thing for it. So I have to create that. OK? So what do I do? I'll go to my string over here. And in here, I'm going to say void, because I don't know what it's going to return. But wait a minute. We said. Don't waste your thing with a void. If you are void, always return the reference of the owner. Remember? So I'll do that. So in here, I'm going to say my string reference operator minus minus. That doesn't receive anything, right? That's what I need to create. So I'm going to go to, uh, let's actually create the definition for it here. How am I supposed to? OK, I'll come up with something. So what do I need to do over here? I need to I need to set this remove the first one right reuse your code all the time so I'm going to say set me what is that that's operator equal that we have written right it sets it now I have to put over here character pointer that doesn't have the first element of the other one, right? First of all, what I need to do, uh, so, so I have to set it to one less than what I am now. Let's put it that way, OK? So the very, uh, actually, it's, it's very difficult, actually, to do so. Let me see how can I actually set it. So in here, let's actually do it like this. First, I'm going to do it. It's, this is better. This is better. This is better. This is better. So I'm going to say my SDR temp is set to uh, m data. The first one I want to miss, so I'm going to do it like that, and I'm going to put the address over here. So I'm going to say, so because array is essentially a pointer that points to the beginning of data, right? If I want to miss the first one, I'm going to set the address of the second, right? And I have to, and at the end, obviously, I'm returning this, right? Correct? But I have to make sure there is something in here. So I have to say if m data exists, otherwise, 
don't waste your time, right? I can even send if m data and m data, which essentially means if there is anything in me, reduce me by one. Otherwise, I shouldn't do anything, right? And then after doing this, all I need to, to do is say, set me to temp. I wrote the set function for it, right? Done. So by reusing my code, first I'm going to say create a temporary one that doesn't have the first one. Now set me to that one. Let's see if it's going to work. Yes. It's going to be empty. We'll see if if that's these. This is why you create unit test. What is a unit test? Whose turn it is? I ask you. What is a unit? I ask you some. What is a unit? Sorry, you. I'm sorry. <laughs> unit test. What is a unit test? Press. <laughs> what is a unit test? Anyone? Write a simple test to test a single function. Write a simple test to set us to test a single feature. Let's call it. Okay. So. You're going to write a function over here and aggressively test this. You're going to keep going through this one by one. Check and make sure everything is good. When it's like you check all the board, it's your job. I'm not going to do it. Go test it. Maybe it's going to fail. I have no idea. I want to teach. I don't want to go through those. So go in here and keep reducing the thing. See if it's going to fail. Put it in extreme stuff. Give it an empty string and see if it's going to fail. OK? So. What I'm going to do in here now, I'm going to see if, see now, that error is gone because I just created it. So in here, I'm going to say s.print, and I'll go to new line, right? So now let's run it. What is this? OK, let's stop it. Deep breath. Let's do it again. <laughs> It's probably because I had some memory leaks that I didn't fix. Remember what I was running? It happens, right? So now in here, I'm going to run. It's going to set it set as to fret. So we know that. Now minus minus comes over here. That's uh, fret, right? And then it's going to come over here and set the temp to, if you, if you look at this, it's red. So F is gone, right? So obviously temp is going to have red in it. Now it's going to set me, so it comes over here, exactly set that one to red, so the operator is set, and it comes out, returns the current one, comes out over here, and S print is red. We did it. And if you want to see if everything is okay or not, <clears throat> you can, uh, how, many, how many do I have? Let's see, right? That's the extreme case, so I have four. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Let's see if it's going to crash on us. If it crashes, it crashes. If not, no, it works, actually. Put it in Valgrind, see if it actually. <laughs> so are we OK? So this is prefix one, OK? So in prefix operators, this is what we do. So where is the? This one, so essentially, this will be a type. I don't know what. Reference, not reference, I don't know, right? And B type, operator, like that. Are we okay? So that's the signature of a unary operator that you would guess. OK, if you see something like this. Obviously, when you are designing it, you know what you are returning. My case was to, so, so essentially, I, this is what I'm doing. So OK, let me just put over here, uh, B member unary uh, prefix unary operator. Now, and obviously, you know that if I had over here, I 
I could have name is set to minus minus s perfectly because the way we design it returns this which is s right so name will be read after that are we okay with this are we okay with this people so I can say return minus minus uh, return uh, print name name print all right what if I want to do this I want to drop the D at the end so it becomes correct how can I do that okay so first of all let's do it I get first I have to mention so this is a unary operator too how many ways compiler can actually show a unary so we say minus minus belongs to s right so this so what is called in here should be something like s dot operator minus minus correct that's what it's supposed to be right but it's not because this belongs to the other one this is post fix wait a minute I have no way to create a signature for this different from that one they came up with a stupid idea you know what they did he said put an int in here and now that is post fix <laughs> That int doesn't mean anything. <laughs> you just put an int in there to make it different with the other one. That's all. So now what I'm going to do in here, I'm going to say, okay, I want it. So essentially, if I develop this one, that's postfix. Don't ask me why. They, because the guy was sitting over there. What the heck am I supposed to do now? Fudge it. I'm going to an int in there <laughs> right so that's that so that's what so to create that what do I need to do I need to drop the last one right I think I have tools for that too I can create so uh, first of all I have to see if I have anything right so it's the same no this one is not, so it has to be null and at least have one in it yeah, so it's the same thing. So if, first of all, return this. I don't want to bother myself with that, right? So first I'm going to do this. And then what I'm going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I'm going to say if m data and m data, oh, and m data, zero. So if I have anything in here, then what am I going to do? I'm going to create temp, temp, temp. So I'm going to say my s. Uh, temp, but this one I'm going to use that the other one that I created. Remember with the length. So so in here I'm going to say uh, m data, and in here I'm going to put ut dot len of m data minus one. The constructor I created. Remember that. So that creates the temp one shorter than the other one. Now I'm going to say I am temp and hopefully that's going to work right so <clears throat> if I do it like this and I write name dot print what will get printed think about it hard so I have Fred the first one removes the F now the second one uh, the second one will remove the D at the end, but plus plus is after S, remember. So what name is going to be when it's printed? Red, right? The answer is no. It's going to be RE. Why? Because you overloaded it. The plus plus that comes after that postfix that happens after the statement, that's, for, that's the previous meaning of it. Wait, because you are creating it, it's just a function. It has no state 
capability like that. If I actually run this thing, you'll see that it will be ref. If I want that, I have to jump through hoops to do it. Let's jump through it. So if I want to do that, it means I cannot return the reference of S anymore because S is RE, correct? So I have to create a temporary thing and do it. So it, this is what happens. Just take a look. This First, I have to do this. Crazy, crazy. So in here, first I have to say my SDR old, and I'm going to say old, and I cannot put equal to, I can't do this, I cannot say equal to this, because I know this means a different thing. It's not assignment operator. Remember that. You can't put the assignment in here, unless you go like this. You can do this, actually. We can say M data. We can do this. So I create an old one that is equal to what I have now, right? Then I do all the good stuff, and at the end, I return the old. So I kind of take a snapshot. The problem is that old is now a local variable. I cannot return the reference. Because if you return the reference, it's going to be dead. So you have to return a value. And when you return a value, it's going to be copy. Believe me, it's going to crash because we don't know something that we are supposed to do. So I'm not going to do it that way now. So as you see, you see what I did, right? I kept the current feature. Now I'm going to remove that one. But, but we can't do that, ladies and gents. Be aware of it, OK? So um, I'll, and I'll tell you the reason for it, and we'll, we'll come to it later. So I'm not going to do it now. I'm just going to hold it, the, the old one. Just keep that in mind that the action of minus minus that comes after doesn't happen after unless you try to do it. We, ha we don't, if I do it right now, it's going to crash, trust me, okay? Because we do not know specific type of constructors that we need to know. Are we OK now to this point? I know I'm not giving you a break. Yeah. Uh, number first. I 49. 49. 49. Yeah. I Yeah. Oh, if you don't like it, you can do it like this. Here. Perfectly good. I, actually, I do that. I prefer that instead of cryptic target of this. I rather call the function. Come on, like like this. I'm telling you, I'm calling my operator equal people. Okay, there is no mystery happening behind this. Are we all okay with this? Oh, remember, at any moment of time, go back to the function if you see you don't know what's going to get called. Immediate, go and manually do the printing that you wanted to do. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So, and so I'll leave that one for that one and this one so we know both are OK. I'm going to say same as line. I hope the line doesn't change. Same, same as line 41. The outcome is the same. Are we OK? It was from day one. I said C plus plus came at the first time. I did this. It was 1996, I think, or, <laughs> or even less. So it's very, very old. It's like ancient time. Oh no, even lately before that. Okay. Anyway, so but but this is what it is. Okay. So so this is operator thingy. So that's uh, unary operators. <sighs> what about this? I, 
I, why can't I do this? That's trouble, isn't it? Also, sorry, I'm try trying to think of something and see. Yeah, what if I want to do this? This is a binary operator, correct, that receives at, at right side, it receives a minus one. At left side, what is the type of this? Oh, it's the right. Do I have access to all three paths? Can I go create a member function in there? No. When you have something like this, and only, only in this type of scenarios, when you don't have access to the left hand one, you cannot change it. Okay? Or what if I have something like this? I'm not going to implement this now because we don't know the knowledge. We, have, we don't have the knowledge. What if I say, uh, uh, what if I say name is set to, name is set to Fred plus uh, S, or uh, Fred plus uh, S, something like that. What if I have something like this? At left side, I have a primitive value. It's not a class. I cannot make this a member of that. It doesn't work. See, you have to struggle and try so hard to do it. And if you couldn't, then the solution is what I'm, gonna, what I'm about to tell you now. It's like, I'm dying of hunger. If I don't eat, I'm going to die. So I go steal a loaf of bread. That's OK. You shouldn't steal. But if you're dying of hunger, it's okay, still a loaf of bread. Don't go rob a bank, but loaf of bread is okay. You follow what I'm saying? You have to think of it that way. You are starving, it's impossible, you cannot survive. I'm gonna die now, like that, right? In that case, then you're gonna think of what we call helper functions. In this case, helper, helper operator overloads. Uh, functions that they don't belong to overloads that they don't belong to any class. And how they work is like this. So if you have a binary operator, so I'm going to, so uh, in, in here I have to say member binary operators with no side effect. And I'm going to just bring this down, all the way down, and start a new section. And, in, and I'm going to say non-member, or what they call it, a helper. I would call it rescue, because these are helpers. You're not supposed to do, you need, when you need help, you, you got to do that. And how you do it, when you have it something like this, this is not a, what should we call it, a, 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 a member operator anymore. So what are you overloading? I'm overloading the at sign, right? So it's operator at sign. What does what does at sign operator return? A type, correct? So it's A type. And it receives two of C. It doesn't belong to any class. It stands by itself. So it has to receive two arguments. So B type, left operand, and C type, right operand. That's how you overload it. If you have no choice, like last thing that you can do. So if I want to do that, now I have to come over here. At left side, what do I have? At left side, let me split it in two. Yeah, make it a little smaller. At, at left, so this one is not today. At left side, I have C out. At right side, I have name. So that's what I need to do. So in here, I'm going to come outside of the class. So it's not my class. 
it is actually the header of, uh, where is the header file? So in here, I'm going to come outside of the class, and I'm going to say, this is operator, insertion operator. At left side of it, I am getting I stream, sorry, O stream. And at right side, I am printing my string, right? So I'm not supposed to change it. So I'm going to constant my str reference str. And what does it return? It returns the O stream to have casting in effect. We have done this before, right? Now, if I create this function, why is it giving me 50 errors? Oh, because I don't have the semicolon over here. So if I create this function, I, I called it method, this function, this is what I need to do. I had a print function, right? Correct? So I'm just going to call the print function. I'm going to say str dot print. What do I pass to it? OSDR. And what is it saying? It says, I think I know why. Because I was a bad person. Oh, no, I wasn't a bad person. What am I missing here? Oh, I am, no. Oh, reference, reference, thank you. I keep forgetting the reference. Thank you. All right, so I keep forgetting the reference. You can never return anything by value. Remember that. Return by value. Bad thing, don't do it, okay? That's it, so it's as simple as that, and remember this syntax. You're gonna reuse this 50,000 times. If somebody wakes you at three o'clock in the morning and say, overload the insertion operator immediately for all classes, this is it, you don't need to think, seriously. This is for all of them. Returns over stream operator, returns, receives the reference, constant reference of the other one, calls the print of it. If there is no print, bad design. That print is like your go-to thing. You have to do it that way. There is no other way. So that's that. Now if you look at uh, the, the program that we have written over here, now if you look at the program that we have written over here, that should go away. There you go. Now your name can be printed on CL. So all these prints that we have done, forget about it. See out. CL print, okay, sure. Name, right? And why am I printing it twice? I have no idea. All right, so you run it, it's, it works the exact same way. I didn't do magic, it's like a function I'm calling, that's all. So in here, and again, if I'm nuts enough, I can actually, uh, I can actually do this. I can say uh, operator and put C out and name. That's perfectly good too. You can call it like that. It's, an, it's a function, right? But obviously, I don't want to do that. I want to use the cool version of it. Okay, that sucks. All right? So, so it, this is it, but I'm not going to do it. So it comes over here. I have the two things that are happening. So when it actually says, it comes right to the, comes right to the function. O stream is the C out and calls the print. No mystery behind anything. It just calls the print, passes the OSTR, and and it prints everything and we're done. Um, come on, you can do it. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. Anyways, it just runs and, and that's it. Are we okay with this? I just want to show you one thing before we go and... So down to this point, are we okay with all the good stuff we talked about? O stream is child of which class? We talked about it before. iOS, right? O stream is child of iOS, but iOS is actually a grand. There's a there's a grandchild. So O stream 
has a child. It's called OF Street. Whatever you do on a screen, OF Stream does that to a file. Anything you do on a screen. And I Stream that you do see in, anything you get from screen, has a child, IF Stream, that does everything. We cannot instantiate C in or C out. Why? We cannot instantiate I Stream or O Stream because they are unique. It's a keyboard and a, you cannot have five keyboards, right? You can't. Because of that, they made the constructors private. You cannot create iStream and OStream. But FStream, I can have 50 files. Right? So if you wanted to create a constructor for OFStream, what would you pass as an argument to the constructor? The file name, right? Let's take a look at this. And all these things are in a header file called fstream. So ifstream, ofstream, they're all in there. So in here I can say ofstream file, um, hello, not hello, name, name.txt, and I can do this. Come on. <laughs> and I run the program. It ran perfectly, right? Take a look. Where is it? There should be a hello.txt somewhere. What? Cancel. Let me check. Oh, name.txt. Why am I looking for hello? Name, there you go. There you go. It just printed in a file. The marvel of inheritance. Every child knows how, how their parents work. Right? File of the child of O Street. Anything, left justification, right justification, all the things you have done. You can do it with file. C in, create something called IF stream. Put a file. Anything you did in IF stream, ignore, pass this one, read line, get, whatever you have, they all work with that one. Why? Because they're children of I stream and O stream. That's file in three seconds. No, in four minutes. Go to home and try it, seriously. Create OF stream and try working with it. Create a big file with data in it. And you don't need to worry about closing it. Why? Because it has a destructor. Any sane person that opens a file in a constructor will close it in a destructor. So you don't need to worry about if I'm going to close the file or not. Just work with it. And when it's done, it goes away. There is a function. You can call dot .close, and it closes it. But hey, why, why do you do that, right? Play with it for the next day, and we'll see. Have a beautiful day, everyone. Oh, I, have to for I forgot. Any questions? Suggestions? Yes. The what of the folder was wrong. Tell me what 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 is oh, January? Thank you. I'll fix that. Thank you. So actually, it's a good example. When you when I screw up something like I didn't I didn't I didn't push it. No no no. I can fix it. I can fix it. But if I pushed it, then rename it using tor using Git, please. Don't rename your your stuff in a repository uh, using uh, operating system stuff, people. Why is it not? So I didn't push this. I didn't, I didn't commit, so let me, I, I'm going to commit it incorrectly. So I'm going to say uh, 09 uh, February 6th. Okay. Select all, commit and push. 
Okay, now if I want to rename that thing that was incorrect, you see, right click, go to tortoise git, and go rename. Do not rename it using the operating system because now git is controlling it. So now in here I have to go. So if you, if you ever did that, your, your uh, uh, repository is going to go bananas. Okay. You have done it many times? Okay, you can just put it again. On. So now I'm going to say com commit, and I'm going to say renamed uh, to feb. Okay. And the exact same thing, and, and it just went through. And another thing, please, now file's the same. You see these are all Jan 6. So if I want to change all those, every and each, I have to go right click with tortoise kit and rename it with tortoise kit. You don't rename it with, okay? Have a beautiful day. Uh.